happy Thursday, everybody. This is Eric in the Card Closet. I am super excited to do this video. This is going to be really exciting for me. Hope you, Hopefully you enjoy it too. I'm going to be showing some old posters of mine from when I was a little kid. Found them while we were doing a garage project a couple weeks ago. And uh, I'm going to show them to you. I haven't seen these in literally 35 years. So I am super pumped. But first, it's episode 453, so let's do our Mystery Man of the Day. This is a tough one, so I'm giving you a little bit of the look of the, of the card there, a little piece of the card to see. Not sure if that'll help or not. Not much of a hint there, but uh, this guy had a 453 slugging percentage for his career. So let's see if you can get him. You're good if you can get this one. His rookie card was in 1977 tops. He shared the card with three other players and he was on the Pirates. He was a two-time All-Star, once in right field and once in center field. And both of those years that he was an All-Star, he led the league in home runs. So if you know your 1982 tops home run leader cards, on the National League side is Mike Schmidt. On the American League side, Dwight Evans, Bobby Gritch, Eddie Murray, and this man. He played in two postseasons, 1981 with Oakland and 1986 with the Boston Red Sox. Played six years in the minor leagues with the Pirates from 1971 to 1976 but the positions that he played, the Pirates were loaded at those positions, and it was just very unlikely that he would ever crack the majors. So that's why they shipped him to Oakland in the trade that brought Phil Scrap Iron Garner to the Pirates. Those Pirate players that were ahead of him in the depth chart were Roberto Clemente, Al Oliver, Omar Moreno, Dave Parker, Willie Stargell, and Richie Zisk. He played 14 seasons, six with Oakland A's, which was the most, and then four with the Boston Red Sox was next. He had 600 career runs, 1,300 career hits, 251 career home runs, 800 career RBIs, and a career average of 252. He was born in Venezuela, and his son, who has the same name, just with Junior after it, Played 10 seasons in the major leagues, mostly with the Montreal Expos, and he was a pitcher. But the dad is well known as being a slugger. I gotta know in the comments if you figured this one out. Giving you some more pictorial hints here. That might give it away for a lot of you. Anybody still not know who it is after seeing him? Tony Armas, our man of the day. All right, let's take a little trip out to my garage and I'll kind of set the stage for this poster viewing. All right, so we've been working on this project in the garage. Give it everything a fresh coat of paint. Ripped out some really old fashioned cabinets that were up there and I had forgotten that on the top of those cabinets, I had put all my childhood posters. Now, I don't remember who gave me the idea, if it was my dad or a friend or something, but I used to keep my childhood posters in these empty Christmas paper wrapped wrapper rolls. Kept them nice and protected. And just a nice way to roll them up and not have to worry about them getting dinged or anything like that. So these have been in here for years and years and years. That's my handwriting from years ago there on the side of these rolls. But anyway, I'm going to open these up. Probably have to check them out for cobwebs and stuff inside before I take each one out. But I've got a bunch of cool posters. Like I said, I haven't seen these in so many years. I used to have these hanging on my walls. Can't wait. So let me get them going here and I'll bring them inside and roll them out on the table. 
First poster out of the roll, Steve Garvey. I remember some friends having this poster too, so I think it was kind of popular at the time. It says the copyright is 1978 by market market com and I'm kind of realizing that uh, this poster is not in good shape um, had this hanging up in our toy room downstairs at our in the house we grew up in on the wall with a bunch of other posters and I'm hoping this isn't a trend about condition but let me know in the comments I as I show these let me know which ones you had maybe and which ones you remember. On to the next one. All right, poster number two, Magic Johnson. And this looks like it's a Feeling 7-Up campaign. Got a facsimile auto there, but look at that smile. Young Magic here. I'm guessing this is early 80s. Probably would have had this one in my own room because... Uh, Magic was one of my favorite players as a kid. I'm going to turn it over so show you the back side. It looks like there was a set. Okay, here's the back. Shows that uh, there was some kind of offer that you could send in to get these posters. The offer expired March 31, 1981. But here are the other players that were in the series. George Brett, Sugar Ray Leonard, Mike Schmidt. I wonder if RJ had that poster when he was a kid. Let me know, RJ. Dave Parker, John Mangini. This is your wheelhouse for era that you were collecting. Did you have that Dave Parker poster? Ann Myers, Bruce Souter, Magic Johnson, Tracy Austin. So they were the 7-Up posters. Let's see what's next. Next up, Fran Tarkenton. Yes. This goes back to the late 70s here. You know, we lived in Minnesota Twins country. And my dad picked this up. And he also picked up a George Foreman one at the same time. And they were the first two posters we had hanging in our toy room. So this... This goes way back. And let's see, it's, this is a copyright in 1978, it says, by Minnesota Vikings Football Club. So shout out to my Viking friends, commenting collector and Stooks, cards and curiosities. Probably some more that I'm not thinking of right off the top of my head. I'm hoping the George Foreman one is out there too, but I'm guessing it's not because I'm guessing I got this one and my brother... Got the George Foreman one. Let's see if we can tell who who that is right there. L E Y. Ron no, it wouldn't be Ron Yeary. Don't know. Don't know who that offensive lineman would have been. Not Tinglehoff or any of those. But yeah, look at this one up here. You can see that we had to tape it at one point. And uh, this one probably had a lot of use. I want to remove that light so I don't get any glare for the next one but yeah that one that's some good memories right there fran tarkenton oh yeah this was my favorite poster as a kid and it hung over the head of my bed this i got in a book order if you were a kid in the late 70s early 80s you might remember those scholastic book orders that we get every month or so and usually it was books but this one month they had this poster in there and this was right at the time of uh, Steelers Super Bowls 13 and 14. They obscure the uniform numbers just enough so you can't place a name on them on who they are but that's the poster big poster biggest one I had Love the look of that. I still love that poster today. That one's kind of one that ages well. So any of you Steeler fans have this one? Mr. Mangini, did you have this? Have you seen it before? 
Awesome, awesome poster. Let's go see what's next. Next up we have Roger Staubach, another one from MarketCom. There was no dot com in this time frame. But this would have had to have been near the end of Roger's Roger Staubach's career. And I'm not really sure why we got this because we we were not Cowboys fans. My brother's a Vikings fan, I'm a Steelers fan. And in the late 70s, they were both rivals with the Cowboys. So I'm not sure. I know Roger came to town and spoke at a sporting goods store. And and uh, there was a big crowd there. I was there that day. So maybe we got this at that event. Not sure. But uh, all right. Who are my middle-aged cowboy fans out there? TJ Mack. Did you have this poster? Have you seen it before? Uh, there's more too, but not thinking of them right now. But yeah, that's a good poster. Love it. Next. How about a Terry Bradshaw poster? From that same series, it looks like, as the Roger Staubach. I'm guessing what might have happened is my brother and I were both allowed to buy a poster one day, and I picked Bradshaw, and there must not have been a good Vikings poster available, so my brother picked the Roger Staw back. I better contact him, see if he wants that poster back. But again, we got damage. You know, you kind of forget over the years that posters are hard to keep in good condition. But uh, again, market.com slash St. Louis. Feels like it should be an internet address, market, market.com slash St. Louis. But anyway, take a look at that beauty. That for sure would have hung on the wall in my room. Some of these I believe I took down when the Steeler glory years were passed. But that's a cool poster. I love it. And next we have Magic Johnson again. This time it's an in-action photo taken during the 1984 NBA Finals which unfortunately they lost to the Celtics there's Danny Ainge, Kevin McHale, Robert Parrish and Bob McAdoo from the Lakers Starline I remember in the mid 80s put out a whole bunch of posters and that glare is actually on the poster it's a ceiling like there in the stadium but yeah there was like several of these for the Lakers and I tried to get them all you know being the person I am and it was tough to do in 1985 because there's nowhere to go for them unless you happen to see them at a store there was no way to to obtain them so this is Magic Johnson would have had this on my wall too probably through high school because the Lakers were awesome through my high school years there we go. I think the next one's going to be another one from this set. Yes, sir. My favorite high school player in high school and college was James Worthy. I wore uniform number 42 because of James. It's also from that Starline series there. And that guy with the number one jersey there in the crowd... I think that's Bob Euchre. You can correct me if I'm wrong. It's kind of blurry. But that looks like Bob Euchre, and that looks like the lady who played his wife on Mr. Belvedere. So that would be my guess as to maybe who those are. Not sure. For exactly sure, but take a look at the crowd. People anticipating. Look at this guy right here. Just, uh, Love catching those people in the crowd. That might be somebody famous. I mean, he looks really tall. But yeah, they're all got they all got their arms up. He just put the ball through for the dunk. Used to love James Worthy, man. He was a good, good player, especially in those finals against the uh, Celtics, the later finals, 87-88. He was difficult for the Celtics because he was young. 
Athletic and the Celtics by that time were getting older. So who are my Laker fans? Rick Acosta, did you have this or the Magic poster? Adam's Card Closet, did you have it? Be interested to know. Next, more Lakers. This one says it's got a copyright of uh, 1987. And this one was rolled so tight, it wants to roll back up. But this has all the Lakers. Michael Thompson, Kareem, Magic, Michael Cooper, Byron Scott, Kurt Rambis, A.C. Green, and James Worthy. World champs. All right, one more poster to go. And unfortunately, I, my favorite basketball poster is not there. It was my, it was a New Balance poster of James Worthy. And uh, it was probably purged long ago because I know I had more of these Lakers too. I had some of their not as great players. And uh, as I was trying to put together this star line listing. So somewhere along the line, years ago, I purged out some posters. But anyway, I'll go get the last one. Bonus. Inside what I thought was going to be the last poster, rolled up, I found this AC Green poster from Sports Illustrated. And it says the copyright on it is 1990. So that would have been my college days. I don't remember hanging sports photos on my posters on my college walls. But anyway, that's another cool picture. And it looks like they're playing the Charlotte Hornets. And not recognizing anybody in the crowd. But anyway, AC Green. Curious what you think. Should he be in the Hall of Fame? It's the all-time... Iron Man for NBA. Nobody's even come close. Solid player at the least. And a great guy. So AC Green, bonus photo, and now one more. And here you go. Here's the last one. The Beatles. I became a big Beatles fan in junior high. My friend Tom, uh, if you've been around with me for a couple of years, it's the lawyer Tom who I did a video with one time. In fact, that video is my most watched video with over 15,000 views. But he had older siblings who, you know, were teenagers when the Beatles were popular and active. So we had access to their records and their tapes. And we became Beatles fans too. We used to listen to those things when we were hanging out. And so this, however, I got in high school as a senior I was in a music group, swing choir group, and we did a secret Santa at uh, Christmas time where every day for a week you had to sneak a little gift into the locker of another person in the group and you didn't know who they were. And the person that had me, her name was Marcy, and on the last day of the week you're supposed to put something a little cooler than the other days. She put this Beatles poster. This was her gift. On the last day of Secret Santa and I really think it's cool and I actually hung this in my bedroom on the wall um, when I was away at college but it was at my home on the wall so the Beatles London Palladium Royal Command Performance 1963 I think it's just a great photo of those guys we've only got uh, the two guys on the bottom alive anymore Ringo and Paul, George and John have passed on, but uh, great group, the Beatles. Some timeless songs. So anyway, that's it for the posters. Every last one I've showed you. Be really curious to know if you enjoyed this, what you thought of these. Did any of them bring back memories for you? This was a good blast from the past for me. I really enjoyed going through these. Not sure what I'm going to do with them. I think the the ones that are in poor condition are going to go in the garbage. But I wanted to capture them before doing that. So, hey, thanks, everybody. If you made it all 20 minutes here, 
looking at my old posters. I really appreciate you. Take care now and have a great weekend ahead. Bye now.